Hey guys, so today we're going to be playing with 123D Catch, which is where you can capture 3D models from photos. Um, it's a really fun bit of software, and best of all, it's free. So I captured my mate Dan. Uh, you can see here that we've captured loads of different photos at different angles, essentially orbiting um, his head so that we could 3D model it. And then we uploaded them into 123D Catch. It went off to the cloud, did its thing, and came back with this 3D model. Now the aim was to print that out and to have a little sort of figurine bust. Um, we only really managed to get the, the top half of his body and the rest was not really, we weren't really able to do, but that's because I didn't take the photos too well. So if I were to do it again, I think I would take a bit more time on that. Side note, if you want to do this yourself, you're going to need to download 123D Catch, perhaps also Mesh Mixer and another program that you might want to use to clean up your model. And if you're going to be 3D printing it, you want to have a look at your uh, 3D printer software so you can see the layers and things and how it's going to work. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is load our photos into 123D Catch. Now I've got them stored somewhere. There we go. So I'm going to select all of these. I've got 42 photos in total. You're only allowed a maximum of 70. So we load those in and then click Create Project. It's going to ask me to fill in some details. You do have to fill these in, but it doesn't matter what they are because we're not going to make it public. So if we click Create, it's going to upload these photos to the cloud. This takes forever, honestly. So ignore all of this and we'll skip to the bit where it's done. So once we're finally loaded into one through 3D Catch with our model, once it's been through the cloud, this is what we get. We get a sort of a 3D representation of a part of my room that it sort of picked up, uh, but also of my mate Dan, just there. And you can see all the cameras, the little wireframe cameras orbiting him. And we can jump to those so you can uh, go to this photo lock mode and we can jump through which photos it picked up and which ones it didn't. You can see here this one didn't get picked up and most of the ones around the back of his head didn't actually get picked up. And then they start to come back in once we get around the front. Now I should have taken a bit more care about doing that, you'll see here that we've got, um, let's just jump out of photo lock mode. You'll see here that uh, we've got a nice orbit going around the front here, but not so much around the back here. So I didn't do a very good job, but the nice orbit around the front meant that we get a nice-ish 3D model that we can cut out. So now that we've got our model here, we can start to cut it out. So if we use the lasso tool, select everything we don't want to keep and press delete. It'll ask me something about the mesh. Um, we could change that a bit later, but we're not going to worry now. And then let's just move this around. There we go. So that is the model we create and it looks pretty good, doesn't it? It certainly looks good with a texture applied, but will it look any good when we get it out of this and put it into something else? So we're just going to export it and we're going to save it as an object file. Now I've loaded up the object file in Mesh Mixer and this is what we get. It doesn't look too bad. It's not very well detailed. Um, I imagine we could use a different resolution from 123D Catch, but because my 3D printer is not going to be able to print really fine detail, I'm perfectly happy with this representation. It certainly looks like him. Um, the ears are a bit funny, they're sort of connected there. That's because around the back of the head didn't really work. If we wanted to, we could go into Sculpt and we could probably uh, sort of push in. So we could probably use this tool here actually. Uh, if I change the size down a touch and we could uh, probably start pushing in a little bit there. Uh, but uh, I don't really want to do too much more work on this, so I just want to get it out so that you can see it. So that's what it currently looks like now. So what we can do is we can repair the faces if there are any problems. So if I look at the inspector tool, it hasn't detected any areas that are a problem. Um, this section is filled in, so we're okay. If that were open, then it would want to fill it in and create a hole. Uh, but I've just clicked Auto Repair anyway. What I'd like to do is sort of close up this gap that's at the bottom there, but we won't worry about that too much. We'll jump straight into 123 Design with this. So if I export this model, uh, we'll call it uh, 
dan capture two, and then we'll jump straight into 123D design. So now we can open it up in 123D design. And there is our model. So we're going to want to reorientate him a little bit. So let's just turn it around to 80 degrees, looks fine to me. And then we're just going to drag him over here and plonk him down. There we go. So we can see in 123 design, this is, this is how our model looks. We've got a few defects here and there. It'd be nice if this section that we sort of messed around with here was filled in. It would give us a bit more of the model to play with, but um, because I'm not very good with all these design softwares yet, I don't know how to do it. But we're gonna sort of make a different model out of it now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw an ellipse That looks about right, and we'll bring it out. You can see the shadow helpful, very helpfully. Um, and now what we want to do is extrude that ellipse into there. We'll leave a little bit of that overhang because we don't want to ruin too much of the body there. So we'll give a little bit. There we go, that's enough. And then we can just take that section up a little bit until we start to see part of the model. There we go. So now we've got a little bust. So we'll just combine those two. So we'll merge the two sections together. There we go, we'll delete our ellipse now, we don't need that. Perfect. Now we'll export as a 3D model. And we'll load it up in our 3D printing software. So here we go. Uh, Dan print three, Dan capture three, there we go. So we'll pop another platform. It looks tiny, doesn't it? But that's okay, because we can scale it up. And that's what it's gonna print like. There's a little bit too much of a base there. I don't like how much there is. So what we can do is we can make a cut here. So if we just uh, cut on the Z axis, so that's the flat plane there, we'll bring that down. And that's probably enough, so we can just cut that. It will separate the two models out. We can then move this one to the platform and center it, and then we're ready to print. It won't need a, a raft on there because there's certainly enough there. It may need some support, so you notice that chin's a proper overhang there. So we'll do an auto, yeah, it, does, it definitely wanted a support there. So now we'll go back, save those sections, and we'll print it, enable supports, We'll leave all the default settings. And then we'll be able to see what the layers are gonna look like. So you'll see that it's done some infill here, at probably about 15%, but it looks like it will print really well. Now, this is what, it's, what it printed like. So you can see a little time lapse now. I had a really great time uh, making this with Dan. It was really fun. We had a, had, a, had a laugh taking the pictures and we had a laugh when it was printing out. Uh, and it's certainly sort of fun, a fun thing to do. And if you're going to make any kind of Lego models with your own heads on, this is a perfect way to do it. It's a difficult thing to use, one through two 3D catch. Not in its interface, but certainly in knowing what kind of images it's going to expect from you. But overall, it's certainly a fun little tool. Now, don't expect to get sort of engineering class 3D models from this thing. It's really not for that. It really is just for pulling real-world objects into the 3D digital world in a very simple way. Um, otherwise, you might need to capture things with um, one of those sort of handheld camera things or handheld laser things, but this is a very simple way of doing it. Anyway, I'd love to see what you guys come up with, or if you've played with it before, let me know.